Hello, hello. We're back. And it's nice to be back. I want to just start by saying thank you to each and every one of you for being here in person. I know it's a crazy time for the people watching this either live or back home. It is epic to be back, and it means the world. And this is a terrible person for standing in front of my camera shot. Her name is Trish. You can lynch her outside after. <laughs> just kidding. So really, it is so good to be back. I can't say thank you enough. And I want to tell you a little story. I want to go straight to the heart, if I can. It's been a crazy 18 months, I think, for everybody. So we don't think we're alone, certainly. I know for sure that 18 months ago, we were running events still. The pandemic was starting to kind of become a thing. I personally held this very optimistic view that everybody was just overreacting. I'll never forget it. And so we carried on running our events. We got off to this cracker start to the year with suits and sneakers. And we set an event up for March and we had to cancel. We work at the time that we were running our events had called us and said, we don't know if we can do this anymore. My speaker at the time called me and said, I don't know if we can do this. Is it responsible to do this? I think the crazier part is when COVID hit, certainly from a business perspective and an eventing perspective, you start to think to yourself, what does the future look like? Like, how long does this last for? What happens now? And of course, as we all know, three, four months into this, we realized, well, it angst is coming back. And so everybody had to make their, their move. It's been a weird thing not being able to run events for a bit because I don't know what it is. I was, I was saying to a few different people today, there's something about bringing people together that is just electric. It matters. And for all the digitization and for all the scale that we have, it's not the same. So, it's certainly been an emotional 18 months, not knowing who, what, where, how, but there have obviously been some real positives, been some real upsides. It's kind of why I picked the image behind me. I think there is something beautiful about the idea of rebirth, of growing again, of changing and making things happen. So certainly from a COVID perspective, what it's done for us to the good is it's forced us to shift. And the net result has transformed into the trust. When we couldn't run events, we didn't know what to do. So myself and an old friend set up two broadcast cameras really at our house somewhere because the first webinar I ever ran during COVID was using my laptop and so my MacBook camera kept looking up my nose. It was just a horrible production. And we knew something had to give so we set up the, these, these two old broadcast cameras and we were really just trying to figure out how to to, I guess, keep people's attention. And then calls started rolling in. Could you do this for us? Could you help us with the same thing? And before we know it, there we are, doing the same thing, but for other people. And we set up this little space inside of WeWork. Uh, at some point, I think May last year, it was epic, but it had one downside, WeWork, was quite simply that we couldn't customize the space. I remember saying to myself in December, well, what do we do? I think we need to find our own space. And this is a COVID time still. Remember, the numbers are running crazy in December again. My thinking is, now's the time to go look for office space. So we were in a little 40 square meter office. And I remember still saying to Nicola, it would be really ideal if we could just find about 200 squares. Well, we fucked that up entirely. <laughs> we are not in a 200 square meter building, clearly. We're in a 1500 square meter building. But what happened was, as I walked through the doors, and as I walked near these stairs, I remember looking at the space and thinking to myself, my God, this, this gives us a shot. When the world semi-returns to whatever normal you want to call, and we have gained these skills of the broadcast mixed with the live, I think this is gonna be something, we're gonna do something with this. And here we are today. What it's allowed us to do is get back. We are indeed back, but with a twist. There will be times for sure where we want to run big events with 300 people, 500 people, 1,000 people. Maybe one day we will go back to those Santon Convention Center days with three and a half, 4,000 people. But we won't have to because right now everybody gets the win. Those of you who are in the audience, you get to be here if you choose. 
But if for some reason something happened tonight and you couldn't make it as often happens, you could catch this at home. The choice is a beautiful thing. The fact that you might really enjoy our upcoming speaker's content and you might want to revisit it tomorrow or next week, and now you have the option to, that is a beautiful thing. But I want to take you a step back beyond that because as in love as I am with the concept of the trust and what it enables us to do, the problems that it enables us to solve. My first true love is suits and sneakers. It always has been and it always will be. And I wanna just share for those of you who are new or old, I think it's a worthwhile time to just go back. I remember in about 2014, I was sitting in Amsterdam and I was thinking to myself, this marketing thing and I, we're just not friends. I want to come home and I wanna do something bigger. And the irony for me is that I'm actually a product of informal learning. But I actually have no formal education whatsoever. I don't even have a matric. I think if you define someone's education standards purely by formal, I think you've got a problem. Well, I've got a problem. But I think because we live in this new time, this new world where thanks to the internet, you can pretty much learn anything, anywhere, anytime, and at virtually no cost. I call that version of learning, informal learning the version where you can use YouTube to pick up skills. You can listen to podcasts, you can read books, and you can go to events like this. And if you do it on a continuous basis, you are becoming a self-directed, continuous learner. There's one catch. You don't get the certificate. That's it. But I think what the world has done and misplaced is the idea between degrees or certificates and skills. See, as an entrepreneur, I've hired a lot of people in my life, and I've actually come to realize that to a degree, I see what I did there. <laughs> to a degree, the piece of paper is terrible at telling me whether this person is going to do well or not. In fact, in my digital marketing agency preceding Suits and Sneakers, the only valuable measure I had to work out if someone was going to do semi-well was a bunch of tests that we had put together for them, and really trying to figure out, are they curious? Do they naturally go and learn about something and acquire skills on their own right? That's it. Those are the people that turned out to be the best people we ever had. So fast forward. I've looked at the world around, and I'm 100% sure of one thing, that more than anything, the world at large needs an education revolution. But I want to define education. I think of education as simply acquiring the skills in a future time to be th relevant and thrive. In a sense, the biggest argument I've had for suits and sneakers is that the future doesn't care how you became an expert. It just matters, can you solve a problem for a large enough group of people, a problem that matters? That's it. If you can do that, you'll kill it in this world. So I think of the future of learning, and I don't just mean for young people, I mean for the world at large, because of the rate at which the world is changing so exponentially, if you don't continue to update your software, so to speak, you literally become irrelevant overnight. I'm sure Windows 95 was an epic operating system, but you wouldn't catch me dead using it today. It's a lot like when someone kind of flaunts their degree at me that they got 40 years ago. It's cool, but if you haven't kept up the learning, if you haven't kept moving, I don't really know if it's that valuable. So here's what I know for sure. I think the future of learning is gonna be a blend between formal and informal education, suits and sneakers. There are many formal education institutions out there in the world, and they can keep doing their thing. I think there's a value and a place for it. That's why I didn't just call the business sneakers. It's not to say that formal is bad. It's to say that you need both. So, more than anything, I've seen that the formal education system at times switches people off learning. Youngsters go to school like, oh, do I have to go? Have you ever watched a youngster pick up something naturally that he or she loves to learn about? You can't rip them away from it. Learning shouldn't be a chore. 
And I know for sure that learning sticks when maximum amount of emotion is infused into the moment. So as I close off my part and I introduce our speaker, I want to leave you with the thought. Suits and Sneakers is beyond trying to be a business. It's attempting to get back to a place where it's a movement, where it almost becomes a school for adults, where it's a place where you can acquire different skills over time, but in the social setting, where it's beautiful to be there, where you want to be there. So, 18 months ago, the third event that we were gonna run for the year in March 2020 was gonna be with your speaker tonight, Eric Kruger. We set this event, we started marketing it, all was well, and then of course the world crumbled before our very eyes. And so we had to make a decision. And I remember saying, well if we have no choice, we'll have to postpone. But just what never occurred to me, that we would cancel. And so I'm very proud to say, we never did. We just postponed. <laughs> Here we are 18 months later. So I want to introduce you to the man of the moment. Ladies and gentlemen, Eric Kruger and I are two days apart in age. I never read bios. I like to tell a little story about that person. It's a simple one. I'm born on the 3rd of May, he's born on the 5th of May. Right? Just kidding. <laughs> 8th of May. I'm gonna say that again so we can edit that out. So Eric and I are five days apart. <laughs> and I met Eric in a, a blur and a haze about four or five years ago, and it was a funny thing because Eric had sent me a message in my inbox. I don't think we were friends, so the message went to that other inbox on Facebook and he was saying, dude, I love what you're doing. I'd love to catch up with you sometime. And clearly, I blanked him. And then so many people kept reaching out to me saying, you've got to talk to this Eric Kruger guy. He's like, he's doing some really cool stuff, and you're doing suits and sneakers, and you should totally talk. So I go to, to his profile, add him, and as I go to the inbox to write, there's a message. I'm like, damn it. I'm really sorry about this, dude. I wasn't blanking you. I'd love to catch up. And from the day we caught up, we just connected. We connected on many different levels. There's a reason I go to Eric constantly. Besides being my brother, besides being my fellow speaker, Eric is fucking good at what he does. And so when we were coming back tonight, I thought about it for all of two seconds, and I called Eric up, and I said, dude, would you please come back, and could we reschedule that event, and we agreed. I have a deep love for Eric, because at the core, Eric wants the same thing I want. He just wants to see better people become better versions of themselves. And I think that's a beautiful thing to celebrate. So ladies and gentlemen, please give me a hand, a big hand, as we give Eric a warm round of applause, and welcome to the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, Eric Kruger.